Hey guys, so welcome to my channel. So in this video, I'm going to tell you about what happens when your seventh lord is placed in Aries, okay? So we're going to take all the planets, all the seven planets, and we're going to see what's the result when your particular seventh lord is placed in a particular sign, okay? So before we get started, please subscribe my channel and follow me on Instagram so that you can stay connected. And if you want to take my consultation, so please click the link below. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, when your seventh lord is placed in Aries, it means that your partner will have many characteristics of Aries. So first of all, it shows that your spouse is very strong, very sturdy, and he loves he or she loves physical activities. He's very physically strong and is impatient, cannot wait, and loves changes, loves to travel, highly active, and looks younger than his original age. Okay, these are some basic things which will be present in your spouse more or less irrespective of whatever planet it is okay so let's we now see the planets which are placed in Aries so let's start with Sun first then here rules your seventh house your Aquarius ascendant and Sun is placed in Aries in your uh, third house so first of all, it shows that Sun is exalted here. It shows that you will get a spouse who is highly dominant, okay, highly confident, is respected, and he holds a good position in the society. He may be in politics or in government, or he will be having a good profession, a good job. And also, uh, as Sun is a mild melphic planet, so it may give some ego issues between you and your spouse. So that's why there can be problems, there can be misunderstanding, and these kind of situations. That's why I suggest you to handle your marriage carefully. Do not become like um, very much egoist or let the matters go off instead of indulging in any kind of fight but yes we need to see the Navamsha placement as well Sun is very good uh, your spouse will be highly dominant and whatever he will speak will really have meaning and really have influence people would follow him you will also have to follow your spouse and doesn't matter if he says right or wrong, but people will have to follow it. And will also be educated, highly educated, will respect knowledge as well. Now, if it's moon and moon in Aries, so moon is getting placed in our fourth house. It shows that first of all, your spouse is very emotional. And as it's going in sign of Aries, which is a fire sign, so his emotions may sometimes blast. Okay, as Aries sign is a very active sign, so they will never keep their emotions in their heart. They will always like tell you what they're feeling, but it will like a fire. Okay, so their emotions it may be anger or jealousy or pain, sadness, happiness. It will just blast. So, and they will also be connected to your family emotionally, especially your mother. They will have good connection. Their career will go through ups and downs. And uh, they will be very impatient. And also, they will be intelligent. And uh, they will not be able to wait. Mind will also constantly move and change as well and like always thinking that that so their mind will not be that stable especially when they will be at home or at work but they will be very emotional so we need to see whole chart and also see the navamsha chart as well now if it's mercury so mercury rules two signs that are gemini and virgo so um for Gemini, if it's in your 7th house, 
So Mercury will sit in fifth house. It shows first of all your spouse is very childish. Your spouse is very intelligent and communicative. You will have to be like a parent to your child at times. Your spouse is very clever as well. And your spouse will bring uh, luck, good luck and money and wealth in your life. It can be a love marriage, especially if Venus gets in water. And your spouse will love children. Your spouse will also love knowledge and will have like many friends will be a good communicator in groups and public will be respected and will be highly business minded as well can be in the fields of business or communication something like that so for Virgo it will sit in their second house okay so second house is your you know 8 to your 7th house so it means that your spouse uh, first of all, it's not very good for marriage, but yes, it shows a, a big transformation in your life after marriage and your spouse may also bring wealth in your life. It also shows it can be arranged marriage because your family is getting involved. It also shows your spouse is highly secretive. More thing, it shows your spouse for both Gemini and Virgo shows that your spouse can get easily bored. And for you as well, as it's your seventh lord, you may get easily bored with relationships. And now, what is sitting in uh, like Aries, which is really a restless sign, so they may begin like getting bored of uh, relationships. Okay, but that doesn't mean your spouse will get bored. The other spouse won't. We need to see his chart. But yes, it's a good placement. It gives a spouse who's very intelligent and a calculative and uh, like clever and also highly communicative, childish kind of spouse. And also will look younger than his original age. So now it is Saturn, then Saturn will rule two signs like Capricorn and Aquarius. So for Capricorn, it will sit in their 10th uh, house and it shows that your spouse, first of all, is getting debilitated here. So yes, it shows some karmic debt to be paid to your spouse, to be paid to your marriage. And it's definitely there. Obviously, there will be trouble getting married, trouble getting the right partner, delayed marriage, and maybe um, if early marriage, then problems after marriage as well. And um, will not be able to adjust with the spouse. It gives a spouse who has ego issues, and also he will be like very cold in nature, highly practical. And when Saturn is in Aries, it is like uh, it has come in a place where it doesn't want to be. Saturn wants to help people. Saturn wants to be in public as a king. So when a servant is coming in uh, the place of a king, definitely he will um, feel a problem. He will feel like, oh, what is doing here? It will not be able to understand. So um, he will definitely have the ego issues and the negative qualities of Aries like restlessness, impatience will all come in him because he don't know how to like manage that position. So these kind of negative qualities may be there in your spouse like ego issues and anger issues, impatience. But he doesn't know how to act like he or she doesn't know how to act in that situation. So uh, if it's receiving niche pump, then it's very good. But we cannot tell uh, you'll get married or not or what kind of spouse. Just only based upon your birth chart, we need to see the option chart as well. And now if it's a curious, then for a curious, it is sitting in their ninth house. So Sun and um, Saturn both are enemies, okay? So there can be like, it's a kind of karmic, connection where 
uh, your enemy from your past life may come as your spouse and you need to form a bond with him so that you may solve the karmic connection and you may like learn the lesson that we need to live like friends we need to live uh, happily so that's why you both have come together in this bond and it shows that like your spouse may create some hindrance in your education and also you will activate some of your karmas from your past life that you may have to pay off in this world to get good luck and i would suggest you to um don't be very egoist in your relationships deal it with patience because both sun and saturn are male fake they are male planets so kind of like that emotions will be not be there in your relationship uh we need to see like where is moon placed but depending upon both the planets that emotional connection may be absent in the relationship and now if it's jupiter so jupiter rules two signs are um sagittarius and pisces for sagittarius uh, it will sit in their 11th house, so the spells will bring good luck, wealth. It's your past life, karma, uh, good karma, that in this life, your spells will bring wealth, success, name and fame in your life, and a good marriage as well. But we need to see the other placements to know exactly what's happening here. When your spouse will come in your life, your friend circle will also increase, your contacts will increase, wealth will increase, and obviously fame will also increase. Now, if it's Pisces, then your 7th Lord will sit in your 8th house, where it will bring transformation in your life. Like you will go through some kinds of um, transformations after marriage. Obviously, um, your spouse will bring wealth. Your in-laws will be highly educated and overall like from good family and will also be educated. Will be wealthy as well. Um, so it gives a good spouse. But yes, you may go through transformations as it is your eighth house, and also it shows karmic connection with your spouse but Jupiter as your seventh lord it shows that in Aries in Aries it shows that your spouse is a spouse who is like who thinks that whatever I know is right and will not be very much interested to listen to others okay will be very confident about whatever he knows will not be able to accept that he may also be wrong at times. So this can be something which may not be good. So now it's Mars, it's Aries, so Mars is sitting here. So Mars is making you mumbling, first of all. But like it's sitting in his own house, so it's good. But yes, you may have to go through some relationships issues before getting your right partner in your life. Your spouse will be highly energetic, will love physical activities, will have so much anger issues, will be dominant and will be of full that Martian characteristics. It can be properly arranged to marriage where family may be involved. And like oh, we need to see the placement in the Namamsha chart as well to tell if this Mars will give good results or not. Because Mars is highly malefic and no matter which sign it is placed in, it's seventh house uh, like it's not very good for marriage because this marriage is a very delicate matter. So these kind of planets like Mars and Saturn and Sun, they don't understand the emotions of marriage. So yes, there can be ego issues, anger in between. And like your spouse will be highly possessive as well. Will not like you talk to uh, other women or men if you are all women then. So this is a thing, but we need to see the Navamsha placement as well. So if it's Scorpio, then your Mars will be sitting in your 12th house, okay? So it's now six places away from your seventh house, which is not really good, and it's Mars in Mars's aspecting as well. So like there will really be troubled relationships you may have to face a lot. Okay, there can be fights, ego issues, anger, and jealousy issues. 
or maybe you won't feel compatible with your spouse but you need to see the Navabsha chart as well and if Jupiter is aspecting your seventh house or Mars then it's very good if Venus is strong and in Navabsha chart also Venus is strong and it's telling that you'll get married and you'll get a good spouse good marriage then at first you may face relationship issues but later on your marriage will be good okay so i'm not just uh, going to be very good I, I just want to tell you what is the truth and what you're gonna face so that you may be careful how to deal with these relationships and seriously according to my own experience if before marriage you see your chart carefully and knows all the drawbacks that you carry about your marriage and you know how to deal with that then seriously it becomes very very helpful for your marriage so that's why you need to be more calm more patient while you deal with your relationship matters okay other things just leave on god so for this placement you need to see the option chart so thank you so much for watching and I'm so much tired speaking and have been a very long video and I'm really tired. Now I need to take rest and thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.